We've now come to the time in our service where each week we remember Jesus and proclaim his death on our behalf together. This is a time specifically designed for Christians, for us to remember, to never forget Jesus and the good news of his grace, which saves us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Let's consider a few verses from 1 John chapter 1 together as we prepare to remember Jesus. If you don't have a Bible, can you raise your hand and we have some men who will come and, and give you one? If you don't have a Bible of your own, please keep that as our gift to you. We're going to start in 1 John 1, verse 5. 1 John 1, 5. John shares the message that he received from Jesus, from God himself in the flesh. He says, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Christians, part of darkened humanity, Christians are united to this light when we turn to God in faith. And the very nature of our lives is, it must be, irrevocably changed. We are as different after salvation as, we, as the day is from the night. And this is because God is as different in himself as light is from darkness. This is not something that you can do for yourself, but it is a gift of God entirely by his grace. Paul writes in Ephesians 5, 8 of saved Christians, for at one time, you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. If you take the bread and juice when it comes, you are declaring, I am in the Lord. I am in the light. And John warns us that there is great risk in being deceived when thinking about our relationship to God and his light. It is right to think soberly about whether you are deceiving yourself about your relationship to the Lord. And before the Lord's Supper is an appropriate time for all of us to consider this. In 1 John 1, 6, the very next verse, after John has proclaimed that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all, he says, if we say... We have fellowship with him. While we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If you say today, I'm, I'm a Christian, but you're in darkness, you're self-evidently lying. That simply makes no sense. If you're walking in the pitch dark of night and you say to yourself, nope, it's day, you're lying. You cannot make it daytime any more than you can Say to the sun, rise and make it so. You are completely dependent on a light outside yourself to be in the light. And to say that you're in the light while you walk in darkness is simply a lie. And it's a lie that so many religious people, so many Christians find themselves falling into. And it's the lie that John is warning us of. And you are, only, you are only lying if you walk in darkness and act like it is light. You can deny the darkness of your own sin, maybe thinking you can generate light on your own through holy living. See verse 8, jump down a, a verse. If we say that we have no sin, right? if you say, oh, I'm going to walk in the light by trying not to sin. Well, if you, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. And if you minimize or ignore your own sin, counting on your own efforts for light, even while you're in darkness, you don't practice the truth, and the truth is not in you. There is only one way to walk in the light, and that is through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me 
will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So walking in the light is fundamentally not about hiding your own sins or minimizing or trying to clean yourself up through self-powered obedience or good works. It is not spirituality, obedience, self-effort, improvement. It's not sitting here at church. What it is is it is coming to Jesus with faith. And when you do that, his blood cleanses you from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light, and how do you walk in the light? By following Jesus. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, We're going to remember that blood with the cup in a minute. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So if you're a Christian, how do you relate to your sin? Do you minimize it, hide it, ignore it? That's like one in the darkness who says he has no sin, who says, I'm not in the dark, I'm in the light. Instead, John talks about the evidence that you are in the light. The evidence is that you actually confess your sins. Verse 9, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's light exposes our sin, not to shame us, but to cleanse us. So Christian, fully aware of your sin, fully aware of your sin this morning, take the bread and juice with confidence because Jesus' blood has cleansed you from all sin while you repent of that sin and walk in the light. And by Jesus' blood, you'll be kept safe in the light throughout this life and into eternity with God in heaven where his very presence replaces the sun with his light. So when the bread and juice come, evaluate your life. Confess your sin. Align your life with obeying God, acting in love towards one another, loving God, not this world. And where there's sin, expose it to the light in confidence because Jesus' blood cleanses you from that sin. But if you evaluate your life and see evidence, or when you evaluate your life and you see evidence of light, don't pat yourself on the back. Don't say, good for me. Don't take the bread and juice and confidence in your own obedience, but rather proclaim as you take it that this is evidence that you are in fellowship with God himself. If you look at verse 1 7, who's the one another? If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If you walk in the light, you have fellowship with God himself. And this is only because Jesus' blood has cleansed you from sin. So when you see godliness in your life, it's because you're in the light, you're in his light, and he puts you there. Proclaim that in Live your life in accordance with that. But there are some people maybe here today who think they have light in themselves. They think that they are walking in the light, but they're actually deceiving themselves. If this is you, you can't deceive God. Everything, his his light will make all things known. And your only true hope is Jesus, whether you know that or not. So apart from his light and truth, you are in darkness and walking ignorantly, sinfully, swiftly towards the precipice of death, leading straight to hell and eternal judgment, hopeless, eternal judgment and separation from God. If that's you, let the bread and juice pass. You can't proclaim a light in which you don't walk. You can't remember one who hasn't died for you. But he died for the sins of the whole world, for all who would turn. So turn to him. A pastor will be up here on the front left at the end of the service. If Jesus isn't your only hope, if you're not certain, when you look at that statement, if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with God, and you're not sure if you're walking in the light, please don't leave here in that state. You have something far more important than taking the bread and juice. Come talk with one of us after the service so that you can have this hope in this life. 
Men, please come serve us and then take communion on your own as your heart is prepared.